Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. The Emmy Award winning real life husband and wife duo, Carolyn and Richard Cullerton, are here today, today to take a look back at their incredible careers in daytime television. The talented pair met when they were both students at Northwestern University. Carolyn grew up watching soaps, and if you can believe it, Richard had never seen one. Fate intervened in 1978 when a family friend offered to make some introductions to an executive at Procter & Gamble Productions. The rest, as we say, is history. Carolyn's first job in the daytime world was working as Paul Rausch's assistant at Another World, and Richard's first job was as a script writer on Texas. From that moment forward, they worked nonstop as breakdown writers, script writers, and as head writers on almost every soap opera on the air. Together, Carolyn and Richard created the General Hospital spinoff, Port Charles, while also serving as head writers for the first few months the series was on the air. They are currently, today, working from home as script writers on NBC's Days of Our Lives. Together, they are the recipi recipient of numerous Daytime Emmy Awards, Writers Guild Awards for their work. They are also the proud parents of two daughters, Emily, who is an adjunct professor of creative writing at St. Joseph's College in Brooklyn, and Kathleen, a journalist. Emily published her first novel in 2017, The Misfortune of Marion Palm. It certainly looks like the writing gene is a strong one in the Culleton family. Please welcome to the locker room, Emmy Award winning, winning writers, Carolyn and Richard Culleton. Hello. Hi. Hi. Did I get that right? Was Another World your first job or Texas was for you, Carolyn? It was Another World. Uh, another World. Uh, there was, was no it. Texas at that point. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. For some reason, as I was saying it, I thought I had it wrong. No. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't. Well, please take me back to Northwestern and what you remember about how you two first met. <laughs> um, we had a mutual friend who... Uh, I was in I was in graduate school and my roommate wanted me to be in a directing scene. And uh, I had a, f a friend who said, you have to meet this. My friend, Richard, my friend, they called him Dick then. My friend Dick Culleton is going to be there. You have to meet him. He's directing. He was directing at that time a production of um, As You Like It. And I thought maybe I could hit him up for a part. <laughs> you know? So, I, so anyway, I, uh, he, I, that's how we met. And um I liked him, so I didn't hit him up for a part. <laughs> <laughs> what was acting? What you were considering at the time, Carolyn? Me? Uh, yeah. I I think that's what I sort of. I was performance was what I was more, was interested in. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. And, and what did you both know exactly what you wanted post graduation? Like, <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just well, wanted to be in the theater and I didn't, but I never had written anything. I wanted to be a director or a writer or work in a theater. That was it. And, and you had never seen a soap opera. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn, you grew up watching As the World Turns and Guiding Light, correct? Yes. Uh, with my mother and uh, primarily as, you know, just to be, hang out with her. And then when I was at Northwestern, I got interested in watching them when I was home for the summer because the acting, the acting became much, I was, I knew more about acting and what, so back then became very interesting to me. So I watched more carefully and I realized that there was some very good acting going on there. Do you, do you remember stories at the time? What, what, what was happening on either show? Oh gosh. Um, I know it's, I know that's, it's a long time <laughs> Hey, is that when time. Peter and Courtney were Scott and Kat? I can't remember. You don't know. Uh, <laughs> I remember. I, I remember watching Peter, Simon, and Courtney on uh, Search for Tomorrow as Scott and Kathy, yeah. and um, being very yeah. impressed. And and uh, that was the one I think I remember the actors from. Because we went, oh, go ahead. We went to Northwestern with who was then Helen Bennett, now Meg Bennett, and, and she, she was the first person out of Northwestern in our class to get a job. And she was on Search for Tomorrow. So she, I did watch to see Helen, but Meg, and Gary Tomlin was on it, and Peter and Courtney, and Lee, Lee, Lee Taggart, and, and we became friends with all of them, but we had seen them on TV 10 years before we ever met any of them. Yeah, so we were, we were like fans. <laughs> 
That's wild. I didn't realize all of them were on Catmull before Gary as well. I knew uh, yeah. Lee was, but I didn't know Gary was. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Gary was on Another World as an actor. That was when I first really got to know him. Was I was a production assistant, he was an actor. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, then you both, after Northwestern, had decided to go for your PhDs. What were you getting your PhDs in? A theater. He was a, you were you were doing directing, right? Yeah. And I was doing dramatic theory. I thought I would be a theater professor in direct plays. And Do you have I, a favorite play you've directed? Oh, I did. Uh, I did. Um, As you like it. That's. Pretty good. Joe, Joe Egg. <laughs> Joe Egg. I did a lot because I did teach for a while and I was a one man theater department. And that was good training because I did a lot of different plays and uh, directing. You do, whether you know it or not, you're beginning to learn about structure and writing. Oh, yeah, that for sure. <laughs> Who knew that you'd end up? I mean, I can't <laughs> even, I, I, I don't even know if you two could put into uh, numbers. The amount of you know pages or scripts that you've written. Oh, oh my God! Oh my <laughs> I, right, it's, you know, ne- looking at your resumes and and the amount of shows, it's just really a, a bravo to both of you. So, as I said in the intro, fate intervened. Can you tell everybody what happened? Uh, we were we were working on these doctorates and and fast becoming I we both becoming disenchanted with the idea of being academics and didn't know what to do. And um, my friend from Northwestern, uh, uh, Marilyn Short, called me out of the blue. And her father was Bob Short, who was the executive in charge of production at the P&G shows. And she said, I had dinner with my dad last night and he's having trouble staffing all of these shows he has because P&G had maybe nine or 10 shows at that point. He said, if you and Richard can get yourselves to New York on your own dime, he'll see that you meet people. And that's that's was the introduction we had, and so we said, "You better believe we'll get there." And uh, you would have you we, would have crawled. Uh, you bet. <laughs> I, you were pretty broke, Carolyn, but we found the money. <laughs> Carolyn, you for sure, having grown up on you know some of those P and G shows, for sure. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. It was real. It was it was a um, you know we met. We met um, at, at that time. Freddie Bartholomew, the child, former child actor, was the executive producer of As the World Turns, and we met him. For my mother, that was the pinnacle of my career. <laughs> that I had met Me, Freddie Bartholomew. Him. More important than anything else I ever did. <laughs> and then we met, and then we they they took us to to Brooklyn, where I had never been. I was the most bizarre thing. I, and we met Paul Rausch as he lay on his sofa, you know, during the interview. <laughs> With a cigar back then, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we came home hoping that something would happen. And a couple of weeks later, I was I was making dinner and the phone rang. And this sort of cranky wo- young woman said, where are you? Paul Rush has been trying to reach you all day. And I said, I, I've been, I, I, ha- I have a life. <laughs> and uh, she said that she was being, prom- she was cranky because she was being promoted and she wanted to, to move out. And uh, I was going to take her place as his assistant. And I was being offered the job. So Richard was working, Richard was working at the university library then. And I said, and he'd ridden his bicycle. I said, I'm going to come and pick you up because uh, Paul Roush offered me a job. And I think we ought to talk about it. And he got in the car and said, I never asked you what you said. And I said, oh, I said yes. <laughs> and we lived in Minneapolis at that point, And I had to be there two weeks later. So it was wow. huge. What, what do you recall about being Paul's assistant? Uh, <laughs> Over my desk, there was the chime from my doorbell, and that's he when he wanted me. He would ring the door, he would ring that chime when I would go to his office. Wow! And I was instructed to open all his mail, including his personal mail, which I never understood, and found some things out. And one of them was that the there was a show called Another World Somerset or something. I think that followed Another World, and that it was being canceled. And I opened this letter and and. I think I was the first one that saw, or it was official confirmation. And so I learned that. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot. He would, he pretended to dictate a letter to me in front of somebody that he wanted to, and I had no idea how to take dictation. And, but I just <laughs> pretended. And... <laughs> oh, God, God, you know, rest his soul. Paul was <laughs> a character. 
you know, he it and, was great though working working there for him because he loved uh, he loved Broadway oh. and he loved Broadway actors and I was so mm -hmm. starstruck. I was meeting people, you know, I've been taking New York Magazine in Minneapolis for two years and I was reading all these, reading, meeting all these people that would come in to do day parts and stuff that um, I had, you know, respected for so long, like Brian Murray and people like that. And um, he knew a lot, Paul. He, he, he produced a Smart good man. show. He did. Yeah. And then 1982, Gail was made executive producer of Texas. And Carolyn, right. you became a Breaktown writer and Richard, a script writer. Right. Um, I know it was a short period of time, but what, I mean, you both had not written for daytime. What, what do you recall about being thrust into that at that moment? Take it. <laughs> so it was really like a, the star has broken her leg. Can you take on the part? One week I, I was at home, I was cleaning houses and uh, I did not work. I was not employed. But anyways, no, but you were doing what you needed to do right. to make money. Right, right, right. Yeah. Carolyn came home and said there was a new a trial scriptwriter that had done such a bad job that the script, the edited script, nobody could read it. And she volunteered me to retype the script for 200 bucks over the weekend because it had to be in on Monday. And I did it. Well, the next week, it was as bad, if not worse. And they said, if you can have it in on Monday morning, you can write the script. And I wrote a script for air in a weekend and handed it in on Monday morning. And prayed. And prayed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and from that, I got it. It's, it's, There's a it's trial a period. You get to you write six scripts over 13 weeks while they make up their right. mind about what your scripts are, you know. So I got a trial. I passed the trial. <laughs> <laughs> you'd written, you'd written, you written a play during that. I think you'd written a play that I let them. That I, I had already them. written a play. I got the on somebody's desk. I think. So they knew he and could. Carolyn, write. you hadn't written for daytime though at that point either when you became not a at all no. for, for Texas. Uh -oh. I mean, overwhelming for both of you, you know, being. Oh, it was so much fun. It was, it was. It, it was not an ordinary, it was a new show trying to find its way. So we had very, it was based on Tex, on Dallas or whatever. So we had outrageous characters. It was really fun for, to write scripts it was really, really fun. I don't know about you. Oh, they, uh, and, and, and I, I was. Yes. It yeah. was. It was. Yeah. I was more yeah. of a. I was put there as a. Gail was going to had to find a new head writer, and she was talking to an actress on the show named Pam Long. You've heard yeah. of her. <laughs> yeah, I and have. I, I very much. think she. <laughs> She thought I could, uh, uh, and and she had liked the, what I used to say about the breakdowns in the in the meeting, and and that was basically she said uh, she wanted me to sort of I think organize Pam's uh, feel, uh, story ideas, and so out of that I got a chance. As she said, I had to write five breakdowns and and lay out the week for myself. And I I just had to do, and work my regular production job during the day, and so it was, it you know it was very uh, stressful, um, but I I did it, and they and they wanted Pam, and so they got me. I think it's part of the package, but, <laughs> but hey, the packages yeah. are good as we can see with the two of you. <laughs> do you um, I, I think you share. Do you recall what Paul's right hand woman was reported to have said when Texas went <laughs> off the air? Oh, she said, What do you expect from a show written by an actress and a secretary? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. And neither one of them was ever heard of again. Yeah, right. you know, well, we thought we were never going to work again, yeah. but we did. did. Is it truthfully? Yeah. Is that what you thought after Texas? Yeah. We thought we were, you know, one hit wonders or one shot wonders or something. Well, that wasn't true. And Gail sure. got made. We didn't know that Gail was being talked to about being coming the head, the executive producer of Guiding Light. And she brought a lot of people with her. Right. And Richard became co-head writer at that time. Right. right? And, right. and you were a breakdown. Do you recall some of the stories that you and Pam created together? Well, it, it 
the first big one was was Beth and Philip and Mindy and Rick and the the four the four, the four musketeers the four musketeers and yeah. then at the same time there was a character remember Annabelle it was like yeah there Charlie was a, there was sort of a ghost story and then there Correct. was also well, we inherited uh, Quentin and Nola getting married. They had oh, okay. been through the romance when we took over and we got them married and moved on right. or whatever. So I I love um the Annabelle story. I love Quentin Nola. But Mark, one of our fans, was asking if you were responsible for the Annabelle and Eli Sims story. Where, yes. Um, yeah. Well, I was part of it. And he, uh, Eli, that was who was that actor? He was terrific. Oh, he's, has a, he's, he has an Irish last name. Yeah. Um, uh, Joyce. Stephen Joyce. Stephen Joyce. Wow, good. And you pulled that out. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I, the sure. fans would have told us in a minute. But that's, <laughs> yes, that's probably, absolutely. Probably. absolutely. Was there an edict that you remember when you arrived at Guiding Light that, you know, they, that you had to do? you know, the four musketeers or, or, you know, bring in the younger audience or something like that. No, it wasn't like that. Well, Pam had written. Philip was there. And Philip Grant was, was there. And he was sort mm -hmm. of not doing anything. And, and we knew we needed a story. So, him. so we actually got there before anybody else. We ended up writing breakdowns for the head writer who was let go. Gotcha. And so, okay. and there was no story. They were like coming, they were, Telling the outlines to scriptwriters over the phone because they were so far behind. So we sort of came up with this interim story where Philip, where there was a German professor who was, who was dying, and Rick wanted to be a doctor, but Philip was better at it. And it was just to keep them going and and just keep something there. But what it was really is like it was just such a great story for for Grant. And he had been just sort of blow drying his hair in a speedo up until then, and we sort of gave him, which isn't all bad. It, yeah, he he could do that. He could do that really I mean, well. That's why he lasted all yes. those years because right. you know people but fell in we, love with this you know. story. Was when people started to go, "This kid can really act," and and he has and such he had such a heart. And so, did Sorry. you do the 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 parent uh, parental story about you lost you? We can't hear you. I, I can hear him. Oh. I put my earbud back in. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Now I can. Oh, okay. I um, Sorry. Is it true that you did the Philip parental story with Justin being his real dad and not Alan Spaulding? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was always a will a, a well kept secret on the show. We didn't come up with that, but then they wanted to they wanted to bring it out in the open, and we did. They did that. I got yeah, yeah. Uh, which was a phenomenal acting on everyone's part. Oh, incredible! When you come on to a show, it's not all you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a lot of it isn't you. A lot of it is making sure you sort of respect what was there, and try to move into the next story. And that so. show had its families in really good shape. Oh. I mean, the Bowers and the Spaldings and the, you know, it, it was, you you had these relationships that you could just tap into. You didn't have to invent families, you know. It was, I followed Doug Marlin twice, not directly. That Doug Marlin had written, the, he wrote Guiding Light, and then much later on he did World Turns for a long period of time. When he left, there was an interim team and I came in after that. And both times, those families were so clear. There were so mm -hmm. many things ready for story. There was nobody just sitting there. He, he really had a remarkable ability to make those worlds, you know, where you knew who everybody was and how they related to each other. That's interesting because one of our Oakdale fans was asking, you know, what was it like to come in post Doug, you know, um, you know, which you said he had it like well put together, but you, is it true that you created Carly Tenney at As the World Turns, Richard? Yep, mm. yep. I mean, that is iconic, <laughs> Bravo. And pretty happy casting. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. you can't get, I mean, you can't. I, I'm not really saying that with any 
you know, question mark. You can't get better than Maura West. Oh, and wasn't she just a college student in Boston? Then? Her, her, she, she went to Bo she went to Boston U. She, she got it. Her, 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 uh, her audition was a videotape she made in Boston. She didn't come into the studio and read with anybody. Wow, <laughs> that that says that says a lot. That that yeah. doesn't happen yeah. very often. That it's just a tape and that. Yeah, but. Wow. So it must have been a joy to write for her at the beginning. Oh, it was fun. What was hard was is we had her on the air and she was so good. It did, but it was, I think it was almost three months before we let the audience know what she was up to. So she was like good for three months. <laughs> and then it was, it, then it was really fun when the audience knew what she was actually doing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, and just creating a character like that and a character that has, you know, lasted, you know, as long as she did um, truly and became one of the most popular couples on that show. Really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was it like to create a show? I mean, somewhat from scratch with Port Charles, T you know, like yeah, a difficult <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet. I I bet. Um, what, what, was, what do you recall about ABC? Like, what did you know it was going to be a spinoff of General it started Hospital? With CMA. I was head writing General Hospital, and it was going pretty well. And it was it it had an amazing cast, and Wendy Rich was producing, and everything was going great. And um, and I had no idea that there was something going on. And I remember they had this meeting. I had this meeting with, not with just Wendy, but with the network. And they said, is there anything you want? And I said, just more time, because I got a lot of story here. Well, I didn't know. Apparently, that was what they wanted me to say. So, <laughs> But, of course, none of that story went over to General to uh, Port Charles. Yeah, right. We had to start all over again. But Wendy, again, Wendy had the idea of the interns. Yeah, she did. She and you know, just start over with a new set of interns that there were, was Karen the only one who had been on General Hospital? I think so. And then five new interns. And I was working on, on the show, The City, at that uh, point, right, yeah. writing breakdowns. And he called me, I think I was in the, at the city office and I got this call and he said, uh, your show's gonna get canceled. And they want to replace it with a spinoff of General Hospital, and they want you to work with me. And and we're going to write it together, and it has to be on the air. This is like January, and it has to be on the air July 1st or something like that. I said, are you out of your mind? You can't do two shows. You'll, you know, and he said, I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> and, uh, so. and then, and then we finally get going. They say, oh, they want a made-for-TV movie for the night before it opens. So we had to write a movie. Wow. To introduce basically the show. Right. right. Wow. So I had to write a Bible, what they call a Bible, because he yeah. was doing General Hospital and uh, get that okayed with all, you know, with, and, and uh, all the character sketches for the new, you know, all the, for the casting director. And, um, you know, it was a lot. It was a ton of work, but it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it, it was fun. I mean, it, it was fun working with Richard. And while you created that, Richard, you were still doing. GH. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. That it. That I. I my head. Poo. <laughs> I Let mean, me be very clear. I didn't ask to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you would never ever ask to do that. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I think any daytime writer, you know, would agree they would never ask to do that at the same time. Yes, right. create a show. <laughs> Yeah, not while you're head writing another show. Yeah. Wow. 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 Had you worked together like that before? No. At Guiding Light, we were. We did. Car Carolyn was writing breakdowns. I was. So we were in the meetings together, and we talked all the time. But that was. That was it. And then on all my children. And all my children. We were on. We we worked on the same writing team on all my children for two years. So. So we 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 had collaborated there, but it's definitely different when you're creating the show than you being a breakdown writer or a script writer on the same team. 
Right, right. It was uh, he would he would sort of just freelance tell me, and he he had this very in his own way. He was very organized, but he would just tell me these random things that like what he thought the sets should be, or you know, and I and what his basic ideas were for stories, and uh, I. I would just try to turn them into something he, it would be that it would be okay with him and wow. yeah that's inc that's incredible what, what are was, you most proud of from Port Charles uh the character I, I think for me it's the the way we started it off with and, and the way the characters were constructed um I thought it it was a well entry it was uh, we, I thought we created, gave them characters that could stick around and, um, you know. Be, it was, you know, you were talking about Carly before. That's an, it, it, Mark Teschner, I think, is the, yep, the no, casting I'll, director. Yeah, still still yeah. on General Hospital. He's oh, wonderful. Yeah, oh, my absolutely, God. Absolutely. The casts, the, the people he brought in yeah. were just amazing. Yeah. We could have cast it more. But that initial cast, I just loved every one of them, you know. I was proud of the fact that we we used uh, um, the character, the guy Mitch. I can't Mitch Longley as right. the guy in the wheelchair was pr and gave him a story with uh, Debbie Morgan, uh, who was his, his boss, you know. And uh, I really loved that story. But um, yeah, it was it was a good, you know, it was a good beginning. I thought. I you know, and and led to many characters still existing, right? I mean, some of them are on General Hospital. Today. I think some of them went back over, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Lucy Lucy Coe came over and uh, her, her, oh. her co-star. <laughs> oh, that's right. We like, and her husband. Her husband. We, he, I saw this movie Wayne Northrup. 30 years before called No Way to Keep Kill, a, No Way to Treat a Lady. And Rod Steiger was a serial killer and he was always in a different costume. So we did that with this with uh, Wayne, Wayne Northrop. Northrop, and every time he showed up, he was the villain. He'd be a completely different character. It was really pretty. And he could do them all. And he, he did all of them. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. You know, you've you've worked on so many shows. When you look back, what what are some of the stories, you know, or characters like Carly Tenney that you're most proud of for creating? Oh gosh, that's a that's a hard one because we. Um, I thought I I will always be proud of uh, when we were on. Uh, we didn't do this all by ourselves, um, but when we were on all my children, the who killed Will story, uh, we had a lot. I thought it was a pretty good mystery and uh, made sense, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, what about you? I like that story a lot. On World Turns, we had a malpractice story. And what I, where Lisa sued John for malpractice. And what I liked about it was it really went, it, the setup to get to the murder. I'm having a little trouble. I don't know. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, Here you are. Okay. Uh, the setup was about two months to get to the murder and it took a, it, but it involved everybody. Um, umbrella story is really hard. Sometimes you had to stumble upon them to get one work. Yeah. You're not just dragging somebody into the story, but everybody has a vested interest in what was going on. So, and it was Claire Bloom who was the villain. That was pretty good. And, and which show was Claire Bloom that you're talking about? As the world I, turns. You went in and out from it. Oh, as the world oh, turns. Oh yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That phenomenal story with Claire okay. Bloom on that show. Um, Richard, speaking of world turns, um, can you tell the story about um, Kim Muse? Uh, you sent it to me. I'm trying to find what you said. <laughs> oh. the, the pretty lady story about Kim Muse. <laughs> well, I had never watched soaps and Carolyn was watching. We both had, I was teaching at night and Carolyn had the summer was, I don't know why we were both off afternoons one summer and she would watch them and I would walk in and out of the room making fun of them. And I wouldn't do, deign to learn their names, the characters' names. So I was, <laughs> so I called Kim the pretty lady. Cause she wasn't pretty. She, oh, she was so pretty. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't so agree more. I'm walking, I'm walking mm -hmm. through this that I go, Wait a minute, does the pretty lady know that? And 
Carolyn said, this is guiding light. She's on Ask the World Tour. <laughs> but that was the beginning of getting pulled in and saying, wait a minute, does she know that? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what was it like working at World Turns? Do you have other characters you really enjoyed writing for? Uh, well, again, it was that it was one of the shows where you fo I followed Doug Marlin. He had he had passed about I think maybe over a year before, but the it, the show was sort of struggling, and then I, and then I was part of a team, uh, and uh, so what the big thing that I tried to do was to go back to those central characters who'd been there, mm -hmm. and not bring on too many new people we brought on carly and sean christian i forget what his yeah mike getting. kasnoff mike right. kasnoff we put yeah. and then we really tried to stop there and really work to get our care you know the show's characters in story and then and, and then you did the, the one with paolo saganti and uh and lily Oh, okay. that was yeah. Jamie, was, that was Jamie a, and Lily. With that, Jamie was, and but Lily. See, but that was actually part of the malpractice story. It all sort of that's what I was saying. We were able to find a way to hook it all together. Yeah. Right, because Orlena was yeah. Right. Orlena right. played Dam Damien's mother. Right. Well, and Carolyn, you and then you were, you know, co head writer with Mr. Sheffer Hogan. What, yes, what I was. was that, what was he like and what was it like? Because I know his you know, he had wild ideas. What was it like to work together for you two to create for World Terms at that time? Uh, they, they they brought him in initially, uh, I think to be just a, they, because he was he was discovered by uh, Bill Graham, from, who was in the P yeah. with P&G, and he wanted him to have a shot, so they brought him in to uh, do breakdowns. And I just, I just liked him because he had this enormous amount of energy and interest in what was going on. And, and uh, then, uh, you know, then all of a sudden there was this uh, shakeup at the top and he became the head writer and very quickly, you know, and, and it was, I wasn't in on any of that. And they, and they asked, you know, and I, and I thought, here we go. <laughs> Cause I was working with, I, at that point he replaced Leah Lehman. I was working with her and but it was just, it was so much fun. It was, I, he really worked, he, he really worked hard and he was such a funny guy and uh, we got along great. And he would write, he would write this, they, they, we do a, a document called a, thr a weekly thrust, which is we hand in, the, when you hand in the breakdowns, you give the, the network and the producer this, supposed to be like a 15 page document that says, here's what's coming. Hogan's would be, about 25 pages, single spaced, you know, and, uh, I love, and so I loved would, reading those. <laughs> loved. They were, I mean, the same scenes were all written. They weren't just said, we're going to do a scene like this. It was there. So I would get up at like five o'clock in the morning and read that. And then we would go into the room and he would just kind of sit there and, and, uh, we, I would sort of. He must have been exhausted. He was exactly right. He's done his part, so I would sort of, you know, lay it out with the breakdown writers, and uh, then he and I would meet on Wednesday. I would, we would lay out. That's when we used to only do four, five a week. It was very civilized. We'd lay out the first four days <laughs> together, and then I would come in and work with him on Wednesday, and and it was that was my favorite day because we would just hang, you know, it was fun and and. I always went home with something I was excited about writing. And, um, and the last thing I would do is say, here's where you are in each story, each of your stories. And he would write it all down. And then we would go our separate ways until the following Monday morning when I would get another one of those you know, enormously long documents. But yeah. he, he, in his own way, he was incredibly hardworking and organized. And so it was, and creative. Uh, yeah, I remember and, he was creative and, and he wrote such lengthy documents. Um, yeah, and he was outrageous and funny. And <laughs> that was, we used to keep a list on the wall of things Hogan hates. Because <laughs> you, if you, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't say like Elaine Stritch around him because he would be gone for half an hour talking about how much he hated her, you know, or uh, some, you know, <laughs> Sesame so Street. Sesame Street. That's right. <laughs> what were some of the, uh, so together you won the daytime Emmy with Hogan in 2001, which I think was for the Rose Lily story. Do you recall that, the, the story we, the, these, you know, you submit two episodes 
And the, the one, one of the episodes we submitted was the wake for James Stenbeck, where all of the women in his life showed up. And uh, I can't remember oh, what yeah. the other one was for. And, and that was about the first time I'd ever won an Emmy. And so I was pretty grateful to him for that. And it was his first, first shot at being a head writer, and he won an Emmy the first year. So, um, yeah. Uh -huh. That, that's incredible. Richard, did you introduce the Frankie and Maggie characters at All My yes. Children? Elizabeth yes, Anderson? I did. Yes. Can you talk about that? I mean, was Frank, Frankie was short term and then people got so upset well, Frankie was killed? Well, and it was very, I mean, people went to my defense and said it was in the long term that Frankie died. It was to make a murder trial for Erica. It was again one of those things where I came on the show and there was and do something and I said, "How long has it been since Eric had been on trial for murder?" And it had been long enough. So Frankie was brought on to as a con woman, young con woman who was going to set Erica up and blackmail her and, and do this because of the drug people over there. I don't remember all. And she came on and she was just, and the other thing, and then she inadvertently got into a relationship with Bianca. And there was just this wonderful chemistry between the two of them. And everybody on the team kind of got excited about writing them, but it was in the cards that this murder had to happen. And people, and the fans were really upset and, it was not, and understandably, there was something really, so he said, well, if we're, if we're being hoary about the whole thing, how about a twin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we brought her back as the twin sister investigating her death. Yeah. And strangely enough, she had a chemistry with Bianca. <laughs> I mean, that's undeniable. And uh, what a story that was. Yeah. Groundbreaking. Yeah. yeah. They had done, the, oh, I hope I'm not, I, it's probably indiscreet. I think they had made Bianca gay because Cher was going through all of this stuff. Yes. I with think chastity. Was, uh, right. Agnes, I think, and, is on record. And for they saying wanted, that. it was a way for Erica to be outrageous. And then I think they kind of wanted everybody to forget that Bianca was gay, but you can't do that it's, you, it, it would have been horrible it would have been but then it was she they kind of just she was nothing nobody knew what to, they wouldn't do anything with her and the thing of it is is they did give me permit you know there was no problem when she and Frankie fell in love there was no second guessing that there was no pulling back we told that story and then, yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, a lot of the gay stories, the the, the networks want to tell them, but then they pull back. Sadly. Yeah. You know, they yeah, get scared. Yeah. I, they get scared. Uh, you know, I hope that's not the case today as much as it, you know. Well, we did uh, the Will and Sunny story on days and that that didn't pull, you know, that sort of, that never pulled back, I thought. Great. Yeah. I love that. Tell me, are are, over the years, could you um, articulate who maybe some of the most difficult characters were to write for? Oh, boy. Wow. I don't know if I... I don't know. I think as long as somebody, I feel like as long as some you can put somebody's in story, uh, uh, the di most difficult characters are the ones without flaws, I would say, <laughs> uh, if someone has to be, you know. Uh, it is important how the character is brought on. And sometimes yeah. if you bring a character on incorrectly, it's hard to put something there. That, is, that, that, that wasn't there at the introduction. Right. They, it's That's one of the things about soaps. They're very organic. And the, fa and the fans know who these people are. And you can't add something. I also hate it when somebody comes in and says, oh, I'm going to, they did it with Felicia in another world all the time. We're going to make her tragic. Here's her tragic past <laughs> and, and, and try to undo who Felicia really was. I thought. Hmm. 
Sometimes, I mean, I, I you see it more as a scriptwriter. I think that that a character than you do. You try not to that a character is an idea and not a human being. And you and you, I find myself feeling I, I don't even know this person. I don't know how to imp. I don't. I can't improvise within this character because I don't know the conflicts because I don't see them on the. I don't see them as though they're written. Does that make any sense? I don't. Yeah, I um, think it does. I think it does. Richard, you served as head writer for Another World from 84 to 85. And did you introduce Marley Hudson, Ellen Wheeler? I, uh, Gary and I, Gary Tomlin and I were there together and Marley was there okay. and the Love family was there, but they were just kind of sitting there. So as Gary and I say, because we're very professional, mm -hmm. we said, so we turned Donna into a slut <laughs> and, made, and made and Marley sure I loved it. <laughs> and then said Marley's actually illegitimate, not the sister. You know, that she's was one the of the things they set up. One of the loves, there was the three kids, Donna, Peter Love, and Marley, and one of them is illegitimate. And that's the only thing you knew about them. So they decided it was Marley and but, that she but was they Donna's were, but kid. that Donna wasn't her sister was her mother. Right. And that's and that led eventually to Vicky, because like so many women on soaps, Donna had two children but forgot one. Right. That's right. Oh, totally. Yeah. They forgot yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Good, old, uh, good old Twilight sleep. They, forget, they yeah. don't even remember giving birth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, Canadian Girl was asking, um, what your favorite stories to write at Another World and Days of Our Lives have been? I, I, on another world, and they weren't, it wasn't a story, it was a cluster of characters. I loved Cecile and Cass and Felicia and Wallingford and Kathleen. I, they were always, we could always come up with something for them to do. And, and, a, and a talented bunch of actors. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, what was the, which days? Days. days. Now I've never written story for days. I only am on on the right. But, we've always but, been just scriptwriters. But I really, because of the actresses involved, I loved writing the when Nicole, uh, Sammy baby switch, and that was again a huge umbrella story with a lot of people involved. Yeah, but I thought that was a really good story. It, I mean, it it is incredible. You know, I'll say it again to think how how much you have written. Does it? Uh, does it amaze you when you, you know, if you step back to really think of all of this work? I, I guess I've become aware of it uh, recently. I just went on Twitter and I, and, and when they bring up a soap on someone brings up a soap on Twitter, I think, Oh, I, oh, I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wrote, I, yeah, I wrote some of that. You know, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and I, that, that had kind of, I used right. to say it was like baseball teams. You get traded from one team to yeah, the other, yeah. and all of a sudden you're someplace else, yeah. and you just sort of try to hit the ground running. Right, right. And, and you, you just said um, days is the longest job you've held. Yes. Currently. currently. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, have, have you liked actually switching? Do you think that's maybe how the creativity has stayed fresh for you? Well, I can't say enough about this cast on Days. I mean, it is so much fun. This is not necessarily the most important thing in a soap opera, but the, this is the funniest cast I have ever written for. I could write for John Aniston forever. He is, it, and so no matter what the story is, you're always there going, oh, but you know, this is for Sammy or this is for Nicole. You got to get it good. You got to. And it, so it keeps it, it. I find it keeps it very I thought, lively. Well, also, I, I thought you were talking about going to through the, from one of the, for being a breakdown writer to a script writer or him, you oh, know, man. that. And I find that I, it, it really helps you recharge your batteries. Yeah. To use I, I, I was curious. Yes. In that, in yeah. that aspect as well. Um, th that, that, um, Fascinating about the recharging the batteries. I totally lost where my question was. Give me one second. What was I going to ask? I do that to people. 
<laughs> um, I totally forgot, but I know Carolyn, you have the choice of being on. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you, Richard. So you you didn't watch soaps when this all began? Did do you watch them today? I watch mine, <laughs> the one. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a, but over the years, when you were doing so many well, of the other, what's different is I had they're down to so few. And I, right. uh, we always had friends on the other ones. So we were always watching and talking to our friends about what they were doing. Yeah. And now it's, there's only four left. And I, I never, the one, two shows we never worked on were Bell shows. So I don't know anybody over there. Yeah. So the only two. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, but Carolyn, so when you were starting out, um, you had the opportunity to choose to be a PA at Texas or another world, but you chose another world, right? No, I chose Texas. You chose Texas. So how I was, I was, a pre I was a production assistant on another world. And they said, you can either stay on this show or you can go to the new show, you know? And, and I, and I thought, well, another world will probably be there forever. And the new show might get canceled, but I, I wanted, you know, I was trying to think about that, but I wanted the opportunity to be on a new show. So I went over there and, it was it was great because you know I learned a lot watching them you know start from scratch and instead of jumping into a show that was already written and it was a lot of work but um, yeah and you worked with really good directors there too and, oh I and did that was I, another thing about Paul that was another thing yeah the, he they had yeah he they had uh, there was a guy named John Pasquin who was directing on Texas and he was really good. And he would, he did a lot of nighttime. He's done movies, not, you know, but he would be so nice. He would explain what he was doing. And I, so I really felt like I learned how daytime gets made. And, and then, so when I started writing about the only thing I had to fall back on was my knowledge of that and what the studio needed and what actors would, you know, I would go to the rehearsal and, they, and actors would say things like, I said the same thing yesterday, or I said the opposite thing yesterday, or my mother died yesterday and I'm, supposed to be having fun today and what you know and i learned from listening to that um a lot about writing that i didn't know i'd be using but i ended up using uh later on and still do i bet R richard did you ever think you'd want to direct oh i w i actually didn't you trail i trailed or? once and i went oh i hate this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really it's oh it, it's so much work no I, it's like when you direct a play, I, 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 wait to to say <laughs> that when you write for these shows and write long story, you say that it's too much work to direct. <laughs> oh, you just got so it's so technical. I, when you direct a play, you start, you bring it along, and then there's opening night. This is like they'll set up a shot, something will go wrong, and they stop for twenty minutes to fix whatever it is. It's like. You're dealing with this cutting between cameras. You're cutting between cameras. It's it's like the minimal amount of time to talk to the and that's what that's what keeps went went away. There used to be a dry rehearsal in the morning. It was just the director and the actors, and that's gone. Now they you know they go right to the studio and start taping. So it just gets more and more. Technical. But even back then, you thought and you had to really know your left from your right and all no. sorts of things. <laughs> It, it is very, I could, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do it, but people do. Well, they, they do it beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. They, but they do it beautifully. Like, and they do it like, like you, they start out as PAs or. or right, right. They, they start, I mean, that's the best thing I think about daytime. I mean, like you, you really hone, both of you honed your craft in all of these, you know, by, by getting, and that's what I was going to say at the start of this, um, you know, it, it really is, um, who you know sometimes and just the 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 your friend who said you know i spoke to my dad and get to new york was, and, we feel extraordinarily we were so, changed the I, course of your lives really yes that. absolutely but i would also like they used to have us teach like when they needed more writers which they don't anymore we used to teach breakdown school or script writing school and i'd say it's not that hard to actually get a sample but you better be ready when you get it because you maybe get one. And if you can't get those voices right, they're not going to, you know, so what was lucky for us is we've been around a long time. When I wrote 
my first sample script, I'd been watching Another World and hearing about it for over a year. I knew those voices in my head before I wrote the first sample. And I knew the actors too. And uh, yeah, yeah, watching them. And and I yeah, and I and, and I saw them rehearse, and I I knew that that really helped a lot. Hmm. Did you write for Beverly McKenzie on both shows? Yep. Got it. Yeah. Guiding Light and, I, and on uh, and, uh, and on uh, Texas, Another World Texas and Guiding Light. Wow, that that's a that's, another. That's right. Yeah. That she was on Guiding Light. Too. Yeah. yeah, Alexandra. Yeah, yeah, crazy. I love that woman. Oh God, me too. I mean, anything that came out of her mouth delivered <laughs> with with such precise uh, cutting, <laughs> you know. <laughs> When she was, when I was a production assistant, she would come in and she, in the for the dry rehearsal, which started at seven o'clock in the morning, and she would be in full makeup with her own hair, with her hair and curlers, because nobody else did her hair. She did her own hair, and she'd have a cup of coffee and she'd tell a few stories, and then she'd start rehearsing, and she would be word perfect. She'd have every line down, and uh, but the stories were the, my favorite part. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet I I think it was Beverly who who basically taught taught Judy Evans sort of uh, to learn the scripts if she had like five scripts to learn them you know like go from Friday Thursday Wednesday Tuesday Monday something like that. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and something that I think Judy has taken with her you know to this day. If I if I have the story right, it but she learned you yeah. know I mean Beverly. Uh, she's a consummate that. pro, Judy. Oh, Judy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And and those four musketeers, what you did back mm. then was... You well, know. you know, that's another story, too. It's like we used to go, I would say, I'll put it on me, I'll go, huh, huh, very good at writing kids. Yeah, really did a good <laughs> yeah, job. Yeah. And then you get another show, so you go, oh, my God. Those kids were so We good. had Grant and Judy and Mike and Krista, you know, we go, oh, that's lightning in a bottle yeah. when you get four people like that. So we were, we, we we were really to, lucky. It was fun. We, we came up with the idea of, like, Let's just take four kids that look their age. So a lot of time, eighteen-year-olds. I, I noticed this on Another World would be about thirty. They cast, <laughs> yeah, kind of old, and they, these kids really seem that age pretty much. And they said, let's take them through a normal uh, summer. And they had, you know, the prom and graduation and, and the, summer and jobs, summer jobs, and, and that, you know. And it was, it was fun. I mean, it was. But they were good. They were good. <laughs> that, yeah. That's when I really got hooked. I, like I said, my mother watched, but I got hooked in that. You know, I was in high school at the same time, relatively, and uh, hooked. Hooked. Did you create Lou Jack? No. That, that was, was uh, Pam and Jeff Ryder. After you, you were you still there during that time? No, I went and gone over to another world. Okay, oh, another world. I think. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes, okay. another world. Another world. He left, and I was. I took maternity leave to have a baby, and when I came back, there was Lou Jack. I mean, that that yeah. all happened <laughs> with, without any input from either one of us. That's so funny. Well, speaking of babies, you have two of them, two yeah. adult, that, yes, uh, daughters who are both writers in their own way. Was were they destined? For that, did you? They heard a lot of talk about what is a story, what isn't a story. Uh, we, the Richards, and a you know an incredible. I mean, just a voracious reader, and they were both readers. And we, as soon as they were four, we started taking them to the theater. And I don't think they could avoid it really. I, they thought they wanted to be actors, and then that lasted about one, about one audition. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and well, they then they both. Tell us about the book, please. Oh, the book. Um, she, Emily the was writing. The Fortune of Marion um, Palm. It's, it's about a, a woman who is working as in the office of a fancy private school in Brooklyn and subtly uh, shoplifting, I mean, uh, shop, I mean embezzling. Uh, embezzling from the school to support her husband and two children's lifestyle. And she gets a, a communication that there is going to be. Uh, thank you for putting that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's going welcome. to be an audit by the IRS, and she goes home and finds this stash of money that she's kept under floorboards in the basement, and she leaves. She leaves her two young children. She leaves her husband, and she goes on the run. And 
Then she finds that she can't really stand the thought of leaving New York, so she stays in Brooklyn, but she stays on the, and the, you know, and then you see the children at home, it's very, you know, missing their mother. And, and it's, you know, it can be very funny and, and very, very sad heartbreaking. And, and uh, now you've sort of read it go, oh, she's the real deal. <laughs> yeah, no, I read it and I was like, I can't, oh, wow. yeah, oh. she can really write. <laughs> what, what was that uh, got like? a nice review in the New York Times. What was it like to see that, to see, you know, her name on, on a book? It's pretty exciting. Pretty great. <laughs> pretty, pretty great, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, she was working on it. She's she's really secretive. We didn't know anything about it till, you know, it, she called us and said she started sending it out to agents. We didn't even know she'd written she's it. She's really private about yeah. all of this. So, wow. and then we had to go around saying it's not autobiographical. Carolyn never embezzled money. Yeah. I'm actually a good father. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love that she kept it a secret. Does she, is she, uh, does she have another one in mind? She's working on another one, yeah. Yeah, but she's teaching now, so she doesn't have a lot of. She hasn't had a lot of time, but but yeah, she is working on another one. And what is she teaching? They're both teaching. Uh, no, no. The, the, Emily's teaching creative writing, and Kate's a journalist. Oh, right, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. And, and what types of stories does she write? Kate. Yeah, or local news yeah. in Brooklyn. I was sitting here. She was working from up here during the pandemic. I was in I was in this office, and I hear her like calling on the phone. She says, "I'm calling about the murder in the 303. Was the Vic caught in the chest or the stomach?" <laughs> oh, well, that's my baby girl. Did you get hit? Yeah, that was. That's like so she covers the news, and but now she's doing. Uh, she's doing. Uh, she's freelancing for a site called Patch. And she's covering the Brooklyn courts. So right now she's covering the R. Kelly trial. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, you know, knowing all of what has gone on in the last couple of years about journalists, does it make you nervous at all that she's in that field? Or It is... Uh, incredibly demand, demanding they the demand for news is never it seems never ending and she was always uh breaking news means you run all over the city following whatever story they assigned to you and it you know I, I got a little she did end up take during covid she sort of decided she was going to take a break from work and and i was glad because she was she was a she was very professional but she was burned out it was wow. It was so sad. All the news, oh, yeah, was, the so news was so sad for so uh, long. And yeah. So sad. It was. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but, but, you know, I really, we need, you know, truth tellers and yes, and, yes, know, tr true journalists for sure. Yeah. She works for now, now works in, for a very small news outlet and it's not as corporate as some of the other places. So they do cover the, the, the New York Times is the, is the sort of lost local news. In New York, it's covered. They so this is patches. Patches nationwide, though it know? is, but, but it but it's all all local news. It's all local news. It's, yeah, they have. It sort of take the the place of the metro pay, metro section right, that used to be in the New York section. Times. Yeah. 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 So you know, four shows left on the air. Huh? Um, does that you know when you hear that you know how does that make you feel? What do you think about the genre today? I'm amazed that it's that it's hung in there. Um, the way the shows were dropping all of a sudden, you know, when when all my children and one life to live go off the air, a show like that, I, I you know, you think, well, this is it. I'm I'm chicken little though. I always think that, but um, the fact that they're hanging in and the four have managed to hang in with you know network support is is great. And I think. And the, I think soaps know, serve a function still. They they certainly do, but everything we watch is a soap today. Yes, yes. E everything That's we watch, and you know, the talk of Pine. They Valley call them coming, cereals, though. Right, but the talk <laughs> of Pine Valley coming back, Days of Our Lives doing a spinoff. You know, there's there's still a huge audience for for these. Do you think that's going to be a spinoff on Days? I don't know. Oh no! They I, are they a, saying that? Oh, I thought it was a spinoff of Days, not Pine Valley. They there's no. A, 
I know. Uh, yeah. One, one life? Or? No, no, no. No. The Peacock Dave's, is doing the show. Is, oh, really? On. Yeah. Oh. With, we with wrote the of- we wrote three of the premiere the, the of the five episodes that they're using as promotional uh, episodes. But I, I, I if it goes further, well, great. <laughs> I'm more, oh, I, hope it does. I I think they're filming it. Oh, probably. yeah. Well, oh, that's we, what you this, we didn't know it was a spin. They sort of said I, it was a standalone. But we we wrote three of oh, the episodes. Maybe they- Oh, so maybe it's I. My interpretation it was a spinoff. Maybe it isn't. I could. I'm not confirm. sure. From your mouth to God's ear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Because they're using Day's characters. Right, sure. right. And they're using Day's characters mostly that are not on on the current days. Right. So right. it's like it's not you know. So it could be. It could be. But just the fact that they're using you know characters from daytime television, right? You know, on a you know on a streaming platform is great just for the genre because you know people people keep asking one of the fans wrote earlier is it true that you know guiding lights coming back online and i i wish i could say that that is true but i you know not not something i've heard you know um people ask every day every day they 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 miss oakdale they miss springfield they miss pine valley they miss landview yeah you know bay city all of them they miss you know, it, it's crazy the amount it, it of... Was, uh, it was sad to see them fall yeah. one by one. There's... Well, and it must have been, you know, f- you know, Carolyn, it, you and I both watched those shows. We both worked there. It really is. It, it really is sad to see them disappear. There was so much um, uh, emphasis on the Nielsen ratings. And, and now I think people, you know, but people don't watch on televisions anymore. They watch on their computers. They watch on their phones even. Our you know, kids don't have tele- televisions. You know, and so oh, I, I thought there don't. was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so this, this this continued emphasis on the Nielsen rating seemed to me, a, 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 you know, to set advertising rates seemed like, like, a, like it was really you're only counting about, I don't know what percentage of the audience, but not 100%. Yeah. Correct. I mean, just like people are watching us on YouTube, people go back and watch all of, you know. Hmm. Oh. Hello? We've lost you. I don't know what to do. This is having issues, I think. I don't want to do this. I don't know. I think he better do it. I don't think we did it. No, I don't think so. We're still on. Yeah. Should I call him? I don't know what to do. There you are. Sorry. <laughs> I was having internet trouble on my end. So oh. everyone, everyone was saying, where's Alan? <laughs> my apologies. It happens. I was just saying, you know, people watch this show on the internet and they go back and watch whatever is available on all the shows that you've worked on from A to Z. If it's on YouTube, they're watching. Is that right? There are people who are watching who I will get comments from that I never watched it when it was on the air. I'm just watching, you know, you know, um, clips, basically, YouTube episodes or whatever. And that's some people's introduction. There is still a huge audience for this. I know. I, I or I, I mean, I don't. I don't know, but I think so. I. Yeah, I just. It, it really is. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you both. Thank you for spending some time with me. I really, really appreciate it. The fans love hearing from you. Continue writing. Continue. Continued success. Thank, thank you, you so for, much. Thank you for your interest. Yes. Yeah, we really appreciate you. Anytime. Oh, you know, Caroline, I was going to ask one more thing before I forgot. Because 
yeah, you know, we worked together for sure while Hogan, but also what was it like returning to Guiding Light with Malie? You two were um, co-head writers, right? Oh yeah, in just for a, just for a short time. Yeah, they, that, you know, she, that, that again was under Paul, right? Was it under Paul? Right. right? Yeah, I hadn't, and I hadn't seen Paul since I was his secretary. <laughs> so <laughs> I had, I had to go and have a drink with him, and I was really scared. <laughs> but he, he was so he was. He, it was going to be a bell. I know. I thought it was going to be, but he was. A, <laughs> I meant he loved Malie because... and so and she wanted me so it worked out we actually got along fine you know I uh we, I, I can't remember I came up with some uh, off the wall idea I, you know there was that crime family on the I can't Santos think of family this, you know and I said you know some, somebody could put somebody in the wood chipper and he said he turned to me and said she's fun <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but, but you know, I love, uh I love it was so that. great Full Pardon? circle moment, a full circle yeah, moment. Yeah, it was. And and Grant was still there, and the character of Alan Spaulding was still there, and Lillian, and uh, a lot of the people that that I, you know, I remembered. And uh, it was, uh, it was, I love, I, and I just, I picked it right up because Beth was still there, you know, the character, yeah. and, and Rick. So um, they were just older, and of course I was too. So, <laughs> but. <laughs> But it was, and Reva, and, you know, Josh, I could go on and on, you know, it yeah. was, uh, it was terrific. And, and it was a terrific uh, breakdown team, uh, Lucky Gold and Dave Kreitzman and Chris Dunn. And I loved working with them. And um, Malie had a lot of ideas. And, and so it, it didn't last that long. Uh, Paul left and then Malie left and then I left. So, uh, but it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, was it Peter John, Simon, of course, he was my, you know, my friend, he was there. So it was, was it great. John Conboy who replaced Paul? I can't remember who replaced Paul. Yeah, John Conboy brought in Alan Weston and uh, Alan Weston wanted to work with Donna Sujewski and, instead of me, so I. It is a revolving door. You, you, The fact that you two are still doing it, bravo. <laughs> but, I, but I wanted to ask, because I knew that that was such a full circle moment you know, going from his assistant to being his head writer. <laughs> you know, that's a, um, not, not yeah, many people can say that. I, it was really, yeah, I'm glad I had a chance to know him under those circumstances uh, again. And, and <laughs> it not, changes and impression. Not now. And not <laughs> right, right. Well, thank exactly. you both. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Same to you. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Sorry so much for the, uh, little technical difficulties there, it happens. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Carolyn and Richard for being here. I hope you all have a great weekend. Tune in on Wednesday, August 25th, when Olympian diver Jordan Wendell and his father join me live right here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders for all upcoming shows. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.